It's currently spring in the bonsai garden and I thought now might be a great time to give you an update on several of the trees and projects that I worked on in the last 12 months. Keep watching to see what was successful and perhaps even more importantly, what wasn't. So there's my upper portion of the tree with its roots and the lower tree. One of the project trees that I worked on last year was this large trident maple, which is a tree which I bought from All Things Bonsai with the intention of separating that, taking an air layer off the top and doing something different with the bottom of the tree. So here is the base or parent tree and you can see that that is now beginning to develop branches and I want to develop out the canopy on there, create a, a sort of drooping or weeping look. And I also thought that perhaps I might take this parent tree out of this pot and actually plant that over a rock. Now, I think I've probably missed my opportunity to do that this year, but certainly next year, that's something that I can look at. And I do have a rock which might be suitable for this. Here is the top part of that tree. And I was a little bit concerned when I first separated this, that perhaps I hadn't collected enough root on there. But the tree has fortunately come into leaf this season, so I'm quite happy and I think that tree will uh, be successful. And I'm just leaving it to develop more roots in this pond basket this season. And then I may well plant that on into um, some kind of training pot next season and just start thickening up and growing that tree so from one tree i've now got two and they're going to radically style both of those quite differently The tree is one that I bought from the Doncaster show in February of 2023. And I was attracted to it because it's quite a substantial lump, quite a thick trunk oak tree for something that's quite small. I've since slipped this tree into this new pot, did a little bit of root work. And I'm just leaving that now to grow and to settle into its new home. This is a superb Tom Butterworth pot. And I think this lovely craggy glaze beautifully complements the bark of this aged oak stump. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is the tree that I like to refer to as my hornbeam stumpy. It's a tree that was developed from a seven foot hornbeam tree, which I cut down to what, about eight inches in height. And I've been regrowing the branching on that ever since to give me a much shorter tree with some nice taper and branch development on that. During early winter, late autumn of last year, once the tree had lost leaves, I went through the process of wiring all of these branches in a more downward aspect to give the tree a better uh, impression of age. I'm really quite happy with the way that this is looking and developing. You may possibly have seen in a recent video where I dug a silver birch sapling which had self-seeded into a garden flower bed. I dug that tree out, uh, put it into a basket, did a severe trunk chop on that leaving it with no branches and then I covered it in this black plastic bag. There is a technique in bonsai 
wet bag technique. And the idea is that that creates a sweat bag environment. It increases the temperature and maintains the moisture in there. And that helps promote growth of buds. And I did say that at the right moment, when I reveal this bag, I would show you the results. So here we go. So we're not seeing huge amounts of buds on here. Perhaps that's because this tree was sat in a more shaded part of the garden. Whereas I believe if it had been in full sun, that would have raised the temperature, uh, raised the humidity in the bag. But there are definitely buds on this stump. So I consider that to be something of a success. And you can just see in here, we've got a nice bud forming there. And there's another one just in there. And we've got a little bud forming just here as well. So I'm hoping that these are going to form shoots. Uh, we're going to get foliage on there and that's going to help the tree to grow and recover. I had hoped that perhaps we might get some around the cut site, but if not, that's not necessarily a problem. If you do a severe trunk chop on a tree at the right time of year, all the stored energy in that tree is fizzing and popping and ready to rise up the tree. And when there's nowhere for it to go, it causes it to create these adventitious buds, which with good luck and good management will form new branches and shoots and help us to rebuild a canopy on this tree and we'll have a much shorter tree. And that's effectively what I did on my hornbeam stumpy tree that you've seen. At the same time that I dug that tree out of the garden, I also did a severe trunk chop on another tree, which is in my growing bed just behind me here. The tree that you've already seen, I had to dig out of the garden because it couldn't possibly have been left there because of where it was situated. However, this one is in my growing bed and was able to do a severe trunk chop and also leave it in place. And you can see that has got leaves forming on it. So I'm very happy with that. And I'll just leave that tree to grow in place for several years until it forms some new branching. And then I'll maybe dig that out and put that into a training basket. This is one of the silver birch trees that I got from Tony Higginson of Tony's Bonsai. And I wired this down to give a weeping aspect to the canopy last summer. And I'm just leaving that tree to grow and develop in this basket to encourage a flatter, more radial root growth. And at some point, perhaps next year, the tree might possibly go into a more shallow ceramic bonsai pot. The tree has this really lovely silver bark on it, which is something that only really comes with age and maturity in silver birch. This is the second of the silver birch trees that I got from our late friend, Tony Higginson. And I had some concerns um, last year, but perhaps because it's only recently been collected that it might not have um, a great deal of healthy root on there. And so I was concerned about how much of this tree would actually survive winter. This second tree is a really lovely twin trunk silver birch and you see it's got lovely white bark on it. However I think of the three trees this is probably the least healthy and in fact this half of the tree has died and so I will soon need to remove that and also I still need to get it out of this soil and into some uh, better draining and perhaps more healthy soil that will help promote root growth on here. So what was potentially a parent and child, mother, daughter, two trunk, silver birch, uh, is almost certainly going to have to now be just a single trunk tree. You can see it's got lots of healthy shoots forming low down. And in fact, it would be a possibility to do perhaps an air layer or a severe trunk chop on there. And silver birch is notorious for losing branches, but at least this half of the tree is alive. And I need to make some decisions about what I'm going to do with this. This is my large Dishurger Japanese maple that I bought from All Things Bonsai perhaps about four years ago now. And I just recently planted it into this Walsall Studio Ceramics pot. 
which I got from the Doncaster Bonsai Experience in February of this year. You can see that the leaves are now beginning to open out on this tree and I think that's going to contrast beautifully with the pale blue colour of this pot. And this is the corkscrew Dishojo Japanese maple that I got from Greenwood Bonsai maybe about two and a half, three years ago now. And again, that's just beginning to leaf out now. Amongst the Japanese maples in the garden, I've got a number in these baskets sat at the end of my bonsai benches here. I always very much sing the praises of these wide shallow baskets. They've got great aeration and because of their width and the fact that they're quite shallow, that's good for generating radial roots and starting a great nabari on the trees. And this first tree here is a Sango Kaku or coral bark Japanese maple. And you see the hints of the sort of pinky red colour in the new growth here. And just behind that is a little princess. It's a Japanese maple that has quite small leaves, so it makes it very suitable to bonsai. And it has a nice sort of reddish tinge to the edges of these green leaves. Both of these trees have been sat in these baskets now for probably about a year, year and a half. And my intention is to leave them in these baskets at least for another two years to try and develop and thicken up the trunks. And the longer they stay in these baskets, the better they will develop. You could perhaps be forgiven for thinking every tree that I've worked on has been a great success and that's certainly not the case. You may recall that in about August of last year I took a rather shapeless Mugo pine and separated that into two nice little showhin pots. Here are those trees now. And as you can see, they didn't fare very well. And really, uh, it's no great loss. These were trees which um, were perhaps destined for the compost heap if they didn't redeem themselves in these pots. And I think they really didn't like having their roots disturbed and being put into these much smaller pots. And then some you win, some you lose. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Amongst the trees that I will be working on in future months is this, and it's the third and final silver birch tree that I was given by Tony. Of the three trees, I think this one is by far the most problematic. It's got quite a thick base to it and some nice colour to the bark but it's a bit of an unusual shape and it has quite a sharp bend in the trunk at this point. It's a little bit of a strange shapeless tree at the moment so it's a little bit of a puzzler as to how to proceed with this. But what I've actually decided is I'm going to cut this up into a number of separate trees and I'm actually going to air layer sections of this tree. Perhaps have a, a main tree growing which will have some taper in it which might be this portion of the tree and then other sections, this section and the section here. Uh, I may well air layer those to give me a couple of separate trees and that then resolves the problem I've got in that there's a number of different potential leaders or trunks on this tree and it's quite confused as it is at the moment. Another tree which I've not shown you or discussed yet is this Shishigashira Japanese maple tree or the lion's head or lion's mane Japanese maple. And there's a tree that grows this very dense green 
foliage, very small leaves that makes it very suitable for bonsai. And I bought this larger tree with the intention of air layering off several of these branches. And it's at a point now where it looks like I may be able to proceed with those air layers very, very shortly. I'm going to do that, provided they're successful. I will be making a gift of several of these air layers to a number of other bonsai YouTubers. So if you want to see me working on this tree and doing the air layers, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in seeing updates to these or any of the other trees in the garden, then be sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified of future videos.